Hello, welcome to my channel. If you like listening rather than reading, you are in the right track. So, relax. The newborn infant be definition. Infancy is the period of life between birth and the acquisition of language approximately one to two years later. The average newborn infant weighs 3.4 kilograms, 7.5 pounds, and is about 51 centimeters long. In general, boys are slightly larger and heavier than girls. The period of the newborn covers the first five to seven days, which the infant normally spends recovering from the stresses of delivery. During their first month, infants sleep for about 16-18 hours a day, with five or six sleep periods alternating with a like number of shorter episodes of wakefulness. The total amount of time spent sleeping decreases dramatically, however, to 9-12 hours a day by age two years, and, with the cessation of nocturnal feedings and morning and afternoon naps, sleep becomes concentrated in one long nocturnal period. Newborns spend as much time in active sleep, during which rapid eye movements occur, as in quiet sleep, but by the third month they spend twice as much time in quiet, as in active sleep, and this trend continues, at a much slower rate, into adulthood. At birth the infant displays a set of inherited reflexes, some of which serve his very survival. An infant only two hours old typically will follow a moving light with his eyes and will blink or close them at the sudden appearance of a bright light or at a sharp, sudden sound nearby. The newborn infant will suck a nipple or almost any other object, e.g., a finger, inserted into his mouth or touching his lips. He will also turn his head toward a touch on the corner of his mouth or on his cheek. This reflex helps him contact the nipple, so he can nurse. He will grasp a finger or other object that is placed in his palm. Reflexes that involve sucking and turning toward stimuli are intended to maintain sustenance, while those involving eye closing or muscle withdrawal are intended to ward off danger. Some reflexes involving the limbs or digits vanish after four months of age. One example is the Babinski reflex, in which the infant bends his big toe upward and spreads his small toes when the outer edge of the sole of his foot is stroked. The newborn baby can turn his head and eyes toward and away from visual and auditory stimuli, signaling interest and alarm respectively. Smiling during infancy changes its meaning over the first year. The smiles that newborns display during their first weeks constitute what is called reflex smiling and usually occur without reference to any external source or stimulus, including other people. By two months, however, infants smile most readily in response to the sound of human voices and by the third or fourth month they smile easily at the sight of a human face, especially one talking to or smiling at the infant. This social smiling, as it is called, marks the beginning of the infant's emotional responses to other people. Cognitive development perception research shows the achievement of extraordinary perceptual sophistication over the first months of life. The fetus is already sensitive to stimulation of its skin, especially in the area around the mouth, by the eighth week of intrauterine development. Judging from their facial expressions, when different substances are placed on their tongues, newborn infants apparently discriminate between bitter, salty, or sweet tastes. They have an innate preference for sweet tastes, and even prefer a sucrose solution to milk. Newborns can also discriminate between different odors or smells. Six-day-old infants can tell the smell of their mother's breast from that of another mother. Much more is known, however, 
about infants' ability to see and hear than about their senses of touch, smell, or taste. During the first half year of life outside the womb, there is rapid development of visual acuity, from 28 hundredths vision, in Snell and notation, among two-week-olds to 20 seventieths vision in five-month-olds to 20 twentieths vision at five years. Even newborn infants are sensitive to visual stimulation and attend selectively to certain visual patterns. They will track moving stimuli with their gaze and can discriminate among lights that vary in brightness. They show a noticeable predilection for the side of the human face, and by the first or second month they are able to discriminate between different faces by attending to the internal features, eyes, nose, and mouth. By the third month, infants can identify their mothers by sight and can discriminate between some facial expressions. By the seventh month, they can recognize a particular person from different perspectives, for example, a full face versus a profile of that face. Infants can identify the same facial expression on the faces of different people and can distinguish male from female faces. Newborns can also hear and are sensitive to the location of a sound source as well as to differences in the frequency of the sound wave. They also discriminate between louder and softer sounds, as indicated by the startle reflex and by rises in heart rate. Newborns can also discriminate among sounds of higher or lower pitch. Continuous rather than intermittent sounds and low tones, rather than high-pitched ones are apparently those most soothing to infants. Even young infants show a striking sensitivity to the tones, rhythmic flow, and individual sounds that together make up human speech. A young infant can make subtle discriminations among phonemes, which are the basic sounds of language, and is able to tell the difference between pa, ga, and ba. Furthermore, Infants less than one year old can make discriminations between phonemes that some adults cannot because the particular discrimination is not present in the adult language. A distinction between ra and la does not exist in the Japanese language and hence Japanese adults fail to make that discrimination. Japanese infants under nine months can discriminate between these two phonemes but lose that ability after one year because the language they hear does not require that discrimination. Determinants of attention both movement and contrasts between dark and light tend to attract an infant's attention. When an alert newborn is placed in a dark room, he opens his eyes and looks around for edges. If he is shown a thick black bar on a white background, his eyes dart to the bar's contour and hover near it, rather than wander randomly across the visual field. Certain other visual qualities engage the infant's attention more effectively than do others. The color red is more attractive than others, for example, and objects characterized by curvilinearity and symmetry hold the infant's attention longer than do ones with straight lines and asymmetric patterns. Sounds having the pitch and timbre of the human voice are more attractive than most others. The newborn is particularly responsive to the tones of a mother's voice, as well as to sounds with a great deal of variety. These classes of stimuli tend to elicit the most prolonged attention during the first eight to ten weeks of life. During the infant's third month a second principle, called the discrepancy principle, begins to assume precedence. According to this principle, the infant is most likely to attend to those events that are moderately different from those he has been exposed to in the past. For instance, by the third month, the infant has developed an internal representation of the faces of the people who care for him. Hence, a slightly distorted face, e.g., 
a mask with the eyes misplaced will provoke more sustained attention than will a normal face or an object the infant has never seen before. This discrepancy principle operates in other sensory modalities as well. Judgment even infants less than one year old are capable of what appears to be complex perceptual judgments. They can estimate the distance of an object from their body, for example. If an infant is shown a rattle and hears its distinctive sound and the room is then darkened, the infant will reach for the rattle if the sound indicates that the object can be grasped but will not reach if the sound indicates that it is beyond his grasp more dramatically infants will also reach for an object with a posture appropriate to its shape if an infant sees a round object in the shape of a wheel and hears its distinctive sound and also sees a smaller rattle and hears its sound he will reach in the dark with one hand in a grasping movement. If he hears the sound of the rattle, but will reach with both hands spread apart. If he hears the sound associated with the wheel. The four month old infant is also capable of rapidly learning to anticipate where a particular event will occur. After less than a minute of exposure to different scenes, that alternate on the right and left side of their visual field, infants will anticipate that a picture is about to appear on the right side and will move their eyes to the right before the picture actually appears. Similarly, infants only five to six months old can detect the relation between the shape of a person's mouth and the sound that is uttered. Thus, they will look longer at a face that matches the sound they are hearing than at one, where there is a mismatch between the mouth's movements and the sound being uttered infants develop an avoidance reaction to the appearance of depth by the age of 8 to 10 months when they begin to crawl. This discovery was made on the surface of an apparatus called the visual cliff. The latter is a table divided into two halves, with its entire top covered by glass. One half of the top has a checkerboard pattern lying immediately underneath the glass. The other half is transparent and reveals a sharp drop of a meter or so, at the bottom of which is the same checkerboard pattern. The infant is placed on a board on the center of the table. The mother stands across the table and tries to tempt her baby to cross the glass on either the shallow or the deep side. Infants younger than seven months will unhesitatingly crawl to the mother across the deep side, but infants older than eight months avoid the deep side and refuse to cross it. The crying and anxiety that eight-month-olds display when confronted with the need to cross the deep side are the result of their ability to perceive depth but also, and more importantly, their ability to recognize the discrepancy of sitting on a solid surface while nevertheless seeing the visual bottom some distance below. Both nervous system maturation and experience contribute to this particular cognitive advance. Finally, Infants create perceptual categories by which to organize experience, a category being defined as a representation of the dimensions or qualities shared by a set of similar, but not identical events. Infants will treat the different colors of the spectrum, for example, according to the same categories that adults recognize. Thus, they show greater attentiveness when a shade of red changes to yellow than when a light shade of red merely replaces a darker shade of the same color. Five-month-old infants can tell the difference between the moving pattern of lights that corresponds to a person walking and a randomly moving version of the same number of lights, suggesting that they have acquired a category for the appearance of a person walking. By one year of age, Infants apparently possess categories for people, edible food, household furniture, and animals. Finally, 
infants seem to show the capacity for cross-modal perception, i.e., they can recognize an object in one sensory modality that they have previously perceived only in another. For example, if an infant sucks a nubby pacifier without being able to see it, and then is shown that pacifier alongside a smooth one, the infant's longer look at the nubby pacifier suggests that he recognizes it, even though he previously experienced only its tactile qualities.